Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Welcome, welcome to the fun side of YouTube. I am Susan, for those of you who don't know me. I make studio vlogs, I have a little small sticker shop business, and I create videos on the behind the scenes of a sticker shop, but I am also trying to get into making DIY videos. So if you click on this video today, I am um, attempting to do more DIYs. DIY has always been a fun hobby of mine and I am venturing into creating DIY content. So yes, welcome. <laughs> In today's video, I am doing three DIY upcycle projects where I turn something that I already have at home and make it into something new that will fit into my environment better. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's jump right into it. So the first project I have for you guys is this cute little planter made out of popsicle sticks. This project was inspired by a TikTok from Lone Fox and if you would like to check that video out, I have it linked in the description box down below. To make this project, I am using this old candle jar. I also have this huge box of popsicle sticks that I've bought a long time ago, and it's coming quite handy. I am going to be using hot glue for this project, but if you want a more permanent solution, I suggest going for a stronger glue. To trim the popsicle sticks, I am using some cutting pliers and an old nail file to sand down any rough edges. Okay, let's get started. I don't like the rounded look of the popsicle sticks, so I am trimming off the ends, and to do this, I clamp my cutting pliers on the end and just kind of bend the pliers back and forth. It will snap off pretty easily along the pliers. After measuring it against the candle jar, the entire popsicle stick minus the two curved edges was the perfect length for the legs of the planter, so I just trimmed off all the rounded parts of four popsicle sticks. I used the first popsicle stick as a guide for the other three sticks to make sure that they were all the same length. We don't want any unstable legs here. <laughs> To make sure we don't get any splinters, I used a nail file to smooth down any jagged edges. To figure out how many popsicle sticks I needed for this project, I put a rubber band around my candle jar and then inserted the sticks one by one around the jar. The rubber band helps to hold the sticks in place and in total, I needed 24 sticks, which was actually perfect because the sticks can be evenly divided in between the four legs. So now that I know how many sticks will be needed, I am going to take the first stick and trim off the rounded edge. Then I measured the stick against the candle jar to figure out where to cut on the stick. I wanted the stick to be the exact length of the candle jar. After cutting off the excess and sanding down the ends of this stick, I used this as a template to measure out where to cut on the other 19 sticks. After making all of the markings, I moved on to, once again, trimming off the edges. In all honesty, this was probably the funnest part of the whole project, but my hands did hurt after holding the pliers for so long. My pliers are pretty small, so the ends of the plier was like pressing into my palm. So I recommend getting bigger pliers. Alas, now for the most tedious part of it all, the sanding. Sanding down 24 sticks was not fun, I tell ya. It took a long time and I ended up just finishing off the day with sanding down the sticks. I continued on the project the next day. Okay, so now it is the next day and I have all of my sticks prepped and ready to go. To start off, I placed a line of hot glue along the length of the candle jar and pressed one of the four leg pieces onto it. I try to make sure this is as straight as possible because this first stick is going to determine the fate of the other 23 sticks. After the first stick is on, it should be very easy going from there. I placed another line of hot glue and then I line a stick up against the previous stick and I keep repeating this until all of the sticks are on. Because it will take 24 sticks to wrap around the entire candle jar, after every five short sticks, I put in one of the four long sticks. I line the leg sticks along the top so that the extra length of the stick hangs off the bottom of the jar. So after going around the jar repeating the same pattern until all of the sticks are used up, 
up, this is how our planter is looking like so far. You can leave it the way it is for a natural look, but I wanted to stain it so that it could match my shelf a little more. But the problem is, I don't have any wood stain and I don't want to go out to buy it, but I do have a bottle of tie-dye. So I googled it and you can use tie-dye dye to stain wood. So I'm gonna give it a try. The ratio is one fourth of a cup of dye and one cup of water. I don't think I'm gonna be making that much dye. So I'm gonna just use the cap. So I'm gonna use one cap of the dye and four caps of water, right? That ratio sounds right, right? <laughs> I should have done this before pouring the dye, but um, remember to protect your hands, guys. I am putting on the gloves now, but you should have done this before pouring the dye. Anyway, using a foam brush, I mixed the dye a little bit and then brushed it onto my planter. At first, it looked like the wood wasn't sucking in any of the dye, but after a few seconds, the wood actually took the dye very well. I was super surprised with how well it worked. After letting it dry overnight, this is how the planter turned out. I am so happy with the color and it turned out looking so, so good. Before we jump into our next project, I wanted to give a little shout out to our friends over at Skillshare. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. I love that Skillshare has so many different classes to offer ranging from illustration to video production, lifestyle to freelancing, and so, so much more. As you can tell from this DIY video, I love redesigning my space. As I learned from Style Your Space, creative tips and techniques for interior design by Emily Henderson, a space that represents your personality and looks like you is wildly fulfilling. In this class, she shares her experience as a stylist within the past 15 years and talks about the rules and trends of styling. Emily gave some really great tips on picking and choosing trends wisely. Every year, new trends come out and you don't want your room to scream your year. I remember there was a phase in my life where I was deeply obsessed with all gray because it was a trend and I very quickly hated it. This is a very insightful class to take if you are also into styling your space. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Right now, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description a one month free trial of Skillshare. So let's start exploring your creativity today. Okay, now let's get back to the DIY. Okay, this project is a super easy and fun one to do. I've been obsessing over amber glass items, so I did some research and I found out that you can easily turn regular glass into amber glass. To do this, you are going to need some high gloss Mod Podge. For the tint, we will be using red, yellow, and green food coloring. This is optional, but to make my tint a little darker, I used the tiniest bit of black acrylic paint as well. I am going to be using a plastic cup and a popsicle stick to mix in the food coloring Mod Podge mix and and this paintbrush to paint the mixture on the glass. As a tester, I am going to try to stain, quote unquote, stain this glass vase that I got from the Dollar Tree. To make the amber mixture, I didn't really measure anything out. I poured some Mod Podge into the cup until it was filled about this much. And then I started adding food coloring into the Mod Podge. I started out with two drops of red, one drop of green, and one drop of yellow. I stirred in the mixture until everything was mixed well and decided that it needed more food coloring. I added two more drops of red, one drop of green, and one drop of yellow, and then stirred again. I then went in with one drop of the black acrylic paint and stirred the mixture in again. I kept adding more food coloring to the mixture until I got it to a color that I was happy with, and the thing to note about making this mixture is that it's kind of hard to gauge the right color um, because it will dry clear and not white, but when you're mixing it, it's a white mixture. It's like a creamy mixture, so um, you kind of have to, use your imaginations or just mimic the color that I have here. In total, I used 13 drops of red, 6 drops of yellow, 3 drops of green, and 2 drops of the black acrylic paint. 
Now let's put on our gloves and start painting. I paint it on the mixture as if it was paint. The first few coats are going to be very thin and streaky and that's okay. I tried applying the mixture as evenly as possible around the vase. You want to make sure not to put too much of the mixture on so that it can dry nicely. It's sort of like applying nail polish, you want thin even coats. After I finish the first layer, I put the vase aside to let it dry. I have it drying on the side right here right now. I'm gonna put a second coat on it, but it's starting to look like an amber glass, which is so nice. After seeing the vase work out so well, I decided to use the mixture on some other things laying around like this San Pellegrino bottle. I saved this bottle to upcycle because I love the shape of it and I just think it would look so cute with some dried flowers in it. The bottle was a little bit more tricky to paint because there were a lot of bumps and ridges from the text and the design, but um, overall, not too bad. By the time I finished putting on the first coat on the bottle, the vase was relatively dry and ready for the second coat. It was nice having two things to work with in rotation because as soon as I got done painting one, the other was dry and ready for another coat. In total, it took about four coats of painting on the Mod Podge mixture for all of the streaks to go away on both the vase and the bottle. I let them dry overnight just to make sure that the tint won't be moving anywhere. If you want, you can add a top coat like a polyurethane to your glasses as a protective sealant but I didn't feel the need to do so. And now for the results! This is how they turned out. I am so absolutely in love with this technique and I am for sure going to be using this more often on all of my empty glass drink bottles that I have. For the last project of today's video, I am going to be upcycling some drawer handles. I've had this Helmer drawer unit from Ikea for some time now, and while I really do like the drawer unit, I've always hated the handles. Here's a before of what the drawer unit looks like. It's really not that bad, it just needs a little shaping. To the salon! So first, I am going to take off all of the handles. To make sure that I can still use the drawers while my handles are undergoing some plastic surgery, I am going to temporarily put on these wooden handles. So after taking off all of the handles and replacing them with the temporary wooden handles, here are all the handles scattered together, prepped and ready for surgery. As you can see, very plain Jane, and it's practically begging for a makeover. I decided to paint my handles matte black by using Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch in the color Flat Black. The handles turned out so matte and pretty with the spray paint. I first sprayed one side of the handles and left it out to dry. A little later, I went back out, flipped all of the handles over to the other side, and gave it another good spray. The spray paint honestly looks so good, and it's just so great with bonding to metals. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry overnight, and then we can bring it in to work with it. On the uglier side of the drawer handle, I am going to put a bead of hot glue on the top left corner. Then, I place a piece of twine on top of the glue and hold the twine on either ends down to secure it in place. After the glue dries, I start wrapping the twine around the handlebar. I also wrap around the excess twine too so that it's hidden inside along with the handlebar. When I get near the end of the handlebar, maybe about 3 or 4 wraps away from the end, I add a bead of hot glue to the bar and then continue to wrap on top of the bead of glue. When I reach the end, I make sure to pull the twine very very tight so that it doesn't unravel while the glue is drying. After the glue has dried, we can snip off the excess twine and this drawer pull is done. Now we just need to continue doing this to the rest of the drawer pulls. And 
ta-da! Here are all six of them complete together. Now let's screw the handles back onto the cabinet to see how they look. I am so in love with the way these handles turned out. I used to refuse to have any black in my room, but wow, look at me now. A changed woman I am. And that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment down below letting me know which one of these upcycle projects you like the most and if you are going to be attempting any of these projects, I would absolutely love to see it. Please tag me on Instagram. My Instagram is at Susan Moo. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to me if you never want to miss another update from this girl. And until next time, bye-bye. 在来的期待